tickets we could have. Yes. 
Okay, it's called CSS Zen Garden. Um, it's cssdengarden.com if you guys want to follow along. So it's a really cool website. This is weird, so I can't see it now. So I'm going to go ahead and click on these different links on the site. And you can see it's like making, like, it looks like a lot of different pages. They're all like really different looking. And what you've probably noticed is a lot of these headings and these, um, the content is all the same. And actually, although it doesn't look like it, all of these are the exact same HTML page. So all of these, so it's really cool. Uh, so you can see, see that all the content is the same. And this is what um, you can, <laughs> is there a question? Oh. Okay, so this kind of like shows you the power of CSS. You can take the exact same HTML page and make it look like anything you want with CSS. Um, back. Okay, so you guys are, um, that was really exciting to see, what CSS, to see what CSS can do, but a lot of you probably still don't know what CSS actually is. So CSS actually stands for um, Cascading Style Sheets, and it's a way to actually separate your structured content, which is what your HTML is, from the visual styling that goes into it, which is what the CSS is. So can anyone think of a good reason why you want to separate these two? I mean, is it easier just everything's in one file, or no? Yeah? Uh, you separate the CSS from HTML and it gives you flexibility in case you want to alter your site later on. Yeah, exactly. So he said it gives you flexibility in case you want to alter your site um, later on. Any other ideas? These are all totally right. I'm just like, I just want to hear different ideas. Different ideas. Okay, all of you have the same idea, but that's basically the right idea, which is good. Um, so, um, with your CSS, as you said, as you saw in that other example, you can make your um, you can make your HTML pages have different designs without even changing the content. So it's really cool, and you can have cool tricks where like people click on different links and it makes your site look differently, which is really nice. Um, and also, it's really good if you're working on a team. Like some people are designers, some people are coders, some people are writers. So you can actually have the designer work purely on the CSS and the coders and um, writers or whatever work on the HTML, so it's really separated. And it also helps with debugging, because if you know that there's a, CS, uh, or a visual problem, you can just go straight to the CSS, and if you know there's a content problem, you just go straight to the HTML. You don't have to like go through this long file with both content and uh, styling embedded. Um, so it also provides a lot of formatting and styling options that are not currently available in HTML. Um, like in CSS, um, you can do cool gradients and rounded corners, and a lot of cool text transforms, which you can't do with CSS. Um, and you can also avoid code repetition, which any CS major knows is a really bad thing to do. Um, and for the rest of you guys, what do I mean by code repetition? So um, imagine you have some kind of HTML code that looks like this. So you have some like text and some regular text, some text that you want to be emphasized. For example, you want to make a bold or you want to make a different color, have a different background. Um, if you had a lot of these different things, then every time you want to style that, you have to include what color you want to make it inside the actual tag. So this is actually is an HTML tag um, to set the font color. So this is blue, so I want to make all these upsized text blue. So that's all nice, but what if two weeks later you want to change the color to red? What would you have to do? Change all of them? Yeah, you have to go, go through and change all of these things to red. So you can see why this is a pretty bad idea. So instead, with, what you can do with CSS, is have um, these emphasized texts, and then you can um, include like a selector, which we'll go over in a couple of slides. So you can say this, this um, text has a class of emphasized, and then in your CSS, you can have a rule that says any span of a class of emphasized should just be blue. So then two weeks later, if you wanted to change it to red, all you have to do is change this one line. You don't have to go through and change every single instance of where you said you want it to be blue. That's really helpful. Any questions? Yeah. Yeah, uh, why, why is the ending tag uh, without the oh, slash. oops. That's my bad. Oh, okay. Good catch. <laughs> that was actually, I meant to do that so you can catch it. Um. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, oh, uh, great check on the candy. <laughs> you get double candy. <laughs> um, previous yeah, slide, too. Oh, previous slide? Oh, shoot. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any questions? I know I'm talking, or maybe I'm going pretty fast. This is a really dense lecture. You're going to be like, I'm going to be throwing all the CSS stuff. So if you have questions, don't hesitate to like, raise your hands. Okay, so um, CSS, just like HTML, is basically a text file with a bunch of like CSS code in it. So it has a CSS, 
CSS extension. So remember with HTML, you had an HTML extension on your files. Um, and basically what a CSS file is, it just has a bunch of different rules of how you want your things to be styled. Um, and each rule kind of like, has like a syntax like this. So you have a selector. For, um, in this instance, we're selecting the body of the HTML file. And then you have some property. Um, for example, I want to change the font weight of everything in the font. And then whatever you want the value to be. So, um, cool. Um, and it's important to notice that syntax actually really matters. Um, and this looks pretty familiar. Maybe if you've done some programming before, you have an open and curly braces around the body of your rule. And then every statement is um, terminated by a semicolon. And it's really important to remember these kind of syntax rules. The CSS doesn't have any like, compiler that tells you, oh, you're missing a semicolon on this line. It'll actually just fail silently. So if you um, see that your website doesn't have any CSS rules or your CSS isn't working, uh, make sure that you have your syntax working. Yeah. Uh, question? Yes. So do you need like space in between like the brackets and the colon? Uh, no, you don't. Disposable? You can actually just put it on the next line. For example, if you have like a bunch of rules and you didn't want to make them all horizontally spaced, you can make it nice. Yeah. This is just for the example of, for the sake of like making it look nice with one, uh, with one uh, property value. Question? So if it if it really fails silently, how do people debug those things? Uh, I think mostly. Don't make a mistake. Yeah, don't make a mistake. <laughs> I'm sure there's some kind of like utility out there that will like do some CSS debugging, but like generally, if you're just doing like vanilla CSS with like just a browser, it's not going to tell you if you're missing a semicolon. Yeah. Oh, just, just stretching like this. <laughs> yeah. There are application building tools such as yeah. Dreamweaver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll probably just do autocomplete. So every okay. time you start typing something and you do a curly brace, it'll do an ending one. Slash. Yeah, it's really nice. Okay. So if you're really lazy. <laughs> okay, so here are some of the most useful and common CSS uh, rules that you're probably seeing without, uh, throughout <laughs> your um, design career, hopefully. Um, so the first one is called. Oh, can you close the door? So the first one is color, and this is actually kind of misleading because when I think color, I think of like the background color of an element, right? So you should actually actually think of this as like font color, because when you say color, that's setting um, the color of the font. And how you do colors in HTML or CSS um, is you specify these color hex codes, um, which is a pound sign followed by either six um, digits from zero to F, or three digits if they're all the same thing. So you can actually, um, if you look up color hex codes online, you'll, you'll see all these kind of charts and like helpful tools to help you like pick out which color you want, and it'll give you a picture. Yeah. Do you know there's a simple way to figure out like, the base colors just based on like, each digit? Yeah. Right yeah. So these are actually, if you want to get really technical about it, um, it's blue uh, RGB. So it's red, green, and blue. And these numbers, if you know um, hex hexadecimal number system, they actually go from zero to two fifty five. Yeah, 0 to 255. So if you have like, so in the example that I showed before, it was like 0, 0, 0, 0, F, F. So that means 0 red, 0 green, and all blue. Yeah, so that's very cool. Yeah. So if you kind of want to eyeball it, I, um, it's kind of hard when they start getting like, if you had like E, F, 1, 3, 5, 9, something. It's like kind of hard to tell what it is. Um, some, I know like if you use Firefox and Mozilla, if you hover over the hex color, it'll show you like a, like a little swatch of what the color is. So that's really helpful. Or you can just look it up online. There are a lot of really helpful like color pickers. And Photoshop does it too. If you look at Photoshop, it'll have a little hex, um, hex code on the bottom. Yeah. No problem. Okay, so the next one is kind of self-explanatory. We have um, font size, which is um, the units can either be in pixels or EM. We'll go over EM later, but pixels, if you guys don't know or don't have experience with it, it's kind of like the smallest unit of what you can see on the screen. So um, if you use Photoshop, it'll show you like all the little pixels. Um, but 12 pixels is usually like the norm of what you would use. Like in Word, I think the, um, the default text size is like 12, right? So 12 is pretty reasonable. Between um, headings, you usually use like 18 or 20. So just like so you can um, have a sense of what the 